the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. During this off season, I have done a lot of videos about certain teams like Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU, Florida. But there's one team that nobody's really talking about, and it's odd because, hmm, they're supposed to be our defending national champions. But you have heard nothing whatsoever from Georgia. And it's concerning for Georgia because could Georgia already be on the decline? Or are they on the incline? Let's talk about it. JPC. I am the OCF. That's the outlaw of college football. And today, class, we're going to talk about the disappearing or the disappearance of our national champions, our defending national champions, those Georgia Bulldogs, those hedge pissers from Athens, Georgia. Finally won a national championship after 41 years without one. No longer is the Fonzie curse in tow. And no longer is Fonzie tapping jukeboxes and talking about Georgia football. Because now, they finally won one. But the thing is, we haven't heard anything about them. As a matter of fact, and all this transfer portal stuff and this NIL stuff, we've heard zero from Georgia. The only thing we've heard from Georgia is the NFL draft. All we've heard from Georgia is how much they've lost, which makes me wonder. You saw what happened, for example, with Auburn, with Cam Newton, when they lost that once in a generational type player. The next following year, once they got into defense of the national championship, they weren't so good anymore. It was just like one of those one hit wonders. And my question is, is Kirby Smart and Georgia one-hit wonder? Because everybody's been making a big splash in this transfer portal stuff from USC to Oklahoma to, to Michigan to Ohio State to Alabama. But we have heard zero from Georgia. And Georgia lost a lot of players. They lost 15 players to the NFL draft. Now, replacing 15 players, you know, that happens a lot every year. But not 15 players that were NFL draft worthy. And all of that, five of them were in the first round, and they were all on defense. So if you're losing a once-in-a-generational type player for some programs that are not accustomed to winning national championships can affect a program like that, with Auburn's case, What's it going to do to Georgia when they lose an entire defense, just about, of players that went on to the NFL draft? Will Stetson Bennett, will he be able to come into his own finally and not need the Georgia defense to bail him out? Because they bailed him out in quite a few games last year. He had that one you know, game in the national championship game against Alabama where he, he done decent. But I just, I mean, not only is Georgia not getting players in the transfer portal, but they're losing players in the transfer portal. How are you going to lose one of your star wide receivers in Jermaine Burton? Not only do you lose him, but you lose him to the, to the team that you beat in the national championship game. i tell you why you lost him. It's because Stetson Bennett came back. Stetson Bennett got too much into his press clippings and wants to come back once again to prove that he has what it takes to go to the NFL. And he'll tell everybody, and he'll 
play this high moral card like, oh, I'm not into the NFL. I'm just coming back to further my education and to continue playing football for the Georgia Bulldogs. Come on, man. Deep down inside, Stetson thinks that he's got the stuff. He thinks that he's the one that won that national championship all by himself. He thinks he's the one that is going to go on and be a star in the NFL. He's just been reading too many press clippings, man. And that's why Jermaine Burton left. Jermaine Burton left because he knew in, in order to get his draft stock up, he needs to have an NFL-type caliber quarterback throw into him, like Bryce Young. And that's why he's over here. And that's why a lot of these wide receivers are coming down here. Even the guy from uh, Louisville, his name escapes me right now, but you know the one they accused uh, Saban of tampering, I think his name was Tyler Harrell. So I'm really concerned about Georgia and their and their fan base because, you know, they went so long without a national championship. I don't know, and especially the way they've act, acted after they won it. I mean, it's just like they've been off the chain. <laughs> no pun intended for the dogs. But they've been off the chain, man. And I'm concerned for them that they're going to come back and they're going to fizzle out. You know, a lot of these teams have come back and fizzled out the next year, like Auburn, like uh, probably LSU did. You know, LSU come back and had a pretty disastrous season following up their championship. And while Kirby did do good in recruiting this year, none of these players that he got that he's got coming back with the experience really put the fear of God into anybody. The defensive players they got coming back, they, they're – I don't even know who half of them are. The offensive players they got coming back, not that great. Outside of Bowers, the tight end, and Stetson coming back, which I think is going to be a hindrance because they have some great quarterbacks on that team. And it was time for Stetson to move on and let those guys move up into that spot. Sort of reminds me of some of these professional wrestlers that, that try to hold people down to keep their spot. But... I just don't know, man. I mean, they're going to come back next year, and the first time they lose a ball game, the people are going to well, if they lose a ball game, or they're going to lose a ball game, or two, or maybe even three or four. And when it does happen, when they, when they lose that first ball game, it's going to be real interesting to see if Kirby can keep it together, if he can keep the consistency. You know, winning a national championship is a great thing, but – if you want to be considered one of the all-time greats and want to be considered a um, traditional uh, powerhouse on the norm, then you need to be able to win at least two national championships or three national championships in a 10-year period. And Georgia hasn't done that yet. The first one they won back in 1981, I think it was, or 1980. I think it's 1980. Back in 1980, when they won that one national championship, they uh, couldn't sustain it. Sure, they were pretty good afterwards. They had a couple of 10 and 2 years, went to Sugar Bowl and whatnot with Vince Dooley, but they never won the national championship again. Hell, they didn't win the uh, SEC championship again until like the, the early 2000s, and that was with Mark Rick. So my main concern with Georgia and because they've been non-existent in the in the uh, off season, is are they going to be able to consistently do this year in and year out? Is Kirby's legacy going to be one of one of the greatest coaches of all time, which he could very well be? Like and I think Dabo Swinney, you know, he won that second national championship. That was the litmus for him. Now. Moving forward, Dabo will always have them two national championships, and that'll put him in a much better breath as far as being one of the greatest coaches of this century or of all time, if Dabo would have won a third or fourth national championship. But is Kirby going to be the next Gene Chiswick? Or is he going to be a little more consistent and maybe be on the same level as Dabo Sweeney and then maybe one day he can adhere to maybe greater things. 
but I'm not even going to mention it because he's not even close to that right now. But you guys and girls tell me out there, why is it that Georgia's been so non-existent in the offseason? And how is it that they have gotten none of these great players out of the transfer portal? And they're the defending national champions. And they can't get a player or two out of the transfer portal out of all these great players. They couldn't get Tyler Harrell from Louisville and say, hey, look, we beat Alabama. Come here and play for Georgia. No, they can't. And it's all one guy. I know it was a great story and watched him cry over there. You felt sorry for him like a lot of people probably felt good for him. But it was time for him to move on, and he hasn't. And now I think that he's going to be a hindrance for Georgia next year, that being Stetson Bennett. And that's all I got to say about that. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams.